What's up everyone? Rachel here with Give Butter. Thanks for joining for another success story from the Give Butter community. Today we are featuring Oasis. Recently, this iconic nightclub's 12 hour live stream telethon raised over $270,000. Yes, you heard me right on Give Butter, which was backed by more than 2,600 supporters. If you are raising funds for a nightclub, a restaurant, or another small business, I think this one is gonna be really, really helpful for you. I have Darcy here with me to share how this event became such a success, as well as tips, tricks, and lessons learned. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story. Thank you for having me. And yeah, it is uh, quite a story. It really was um, you know, a surprise for me, and I think a surprise for the community um, but it really showed what can happen when everyone rallies um, to make it happen. And I, again, it, and we did it in such a short amount of time. I, I had to spend a couple of days afterwards reminding myself that it was true. It was real. Had, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that we pulled it off. It was. How uh, long did it take you to pull it off? Well, I mean, that's that's a tricky question because didn't do it. We did it in nine days. We, we set it up. We had nine days oh. lead time, which is insane, but we were, we were so broke and it was, it was really, um, you know, the come to Jesus moment. And we had like, we had to do something, um, right then. And mm -hmm. so, um, I, I just pushed through and a lot of my staff <laughs> thought I was crazy. A couple of them were pissed at me for having to like scramble so hard, but, I think afterwards when they saw the success, everybody was blown away. But but having said that, we had been, since the pandemic had hit, we had been working on a lot of virtual events and virtual shows. Mm -hmm. So we were equipped to, to do a three camera live switching um, uh, stream, you know, and we were able to- yeah. yeah, we had a lot of practice and we had people that had been practicing and we had a, um, you know, a setup already there oh, that, nice. that could lend itself. Um, so we did have that. So I think for some people, if they thought that we pulled everything off in nine days, that I think that would have been inhuman. <laughs> uh, so, um, but, but I, I was grateful that we had been doing that work earlier. Incredible. Okay. I have so many questions. This is a campaign. Our team has just loved following along. So before we dive in, can you tell people a little bit more if they're not familiar with who you are and a little bit about Oasis? Sure. Well, my name is Darcy Drollinger and I am the owner of Oasis. Oasis is a drag, um, cabaret, theater, and nightclub in San Francisco. It's also the largest drag club in the U.S. So, oh, wow. So, and I'm very proud of what we do. And I, my goal has always been to be more of a clubhouse for people. Um, we host a lot of um, fundraisers and charity events. Um, you know, we do, we've got big drag queen and king pageants, but we're also a cabaret spot. We've got a Steinway Baby Grand and we, Ooh. we, um, our roster is full of all of the touring drag performers, the RuPaul girls, but also the more downtown cabaret artists that, um, I think is important to have, um, those people at a place where the, the price point is, we can keep the price point low enough so um, we're able to be uh, accessible by a wider audience. So um, yeah, that's what we do. And we've been open. This is our seventh year. Wow, that's incredible. And yet over a year ago, when the pandemic hit, it hit Oasis hard. So can you tell people a little bit about that? What's been going on the last year? Well, it was really rough and it happened over just a couple of days and we thought it was, you know, like everybody else, we thought it wasn't going to last very long, yeah. um, but it did. And, and for uh, us, it was, it was very hard. I mean, my, my whole career and, and how I make money is bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is, uh, it was really hard to suddenly not be able to do that anymore. And, um, you know, it's also a very expensive thing to do. It's a large space. 
Um, it's got high overhead and um, that doesn't go away. You know, you still got to pay your electricity and your internet and your garbage bills and your rent. And uh, it, it started to, to, you know, be more than we could do. It, and, and, you know, there we did, we were able to build a park limb, we built a roof deck. And so we were able to do some outdoor, but I did that more for my staff so they could, you know, have, a, have some income, but it, it, we'd lose money at it. And after a while I couldn't lose any more money. And then it, it I kept waiting for assistance and it kept not coming and yeah. it, it was getting harder and harder. And so once you're, once you're over three months, you know, uh, <laughs> behind on your rent, and once you've maxed all the credit cards and your personal savings, it gets to the point, I, I kept sort of dancing as fast as I could and really hoping that something would come show itself and, and uh, save us, and it didn't. And finally, I had to admit to everyone that we can't, survive if if we don't have some money and it was hard but it was also a relief to finally admit that and mm -hmm. it's a it's been such a home for so many people um you know in their careers and cutting their teeth for the first time on a stage and and for so many it's you know it's it's got a very much of a cheers element there where everyone knows each other and there's a real community not just on stage but in the audience and so I think the thought of losing this after we've lost so many um, spaces and especially so many, um, you know, queer and gay and lesbian spaces, specifically in San Francisco, the thought of losing something like this that is such an anchor was, uh, you know, terrifying to people. Yeah. And so there were so many in your community over two thousand almost three thousand people <laughs> who rallied mind. who rallied to say let's save oasis and so you pulled off this 12 hour telethon can you tell everybody a little bit about that behind the scenes how did you make this so successful first of all i was obsessed i was obsessed with having a phone bank of drag queens you know, I, I, had, Absolutely. Right? I had grown up on the Jerry Lewis telethon, watching the Jerry Lewis right? telethon and, yeah. Like, yeah, the, and, and the PBS, you know, yeah. drive and stuff. So I was like, for nothing else, I got to have this phone bank. Of, and people kind of talk me out of it all the time. I'm like, no, it's important. <laughs> um, you know, so I was, I, I felt like I have enough people, enough um, performers, both locally and from around the country that would show up for this. And I thought this, we can make this, the, you give it the same feel as those old school telethons were. And, and it, it mm -hmm. feels, you know, some people, the, my younger staff never saw a telethon before. They sort of knew what they were, but not really. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, there was sort of a, a fun excitement around, okay, we're going to raise money, but we're going to raise money in a way that is very interactive and, and give back. Like we're going to have performances, we're going to have testimonials, um, both live and digital. You know, we were trying to still maintain um, some sort of a, of a, uh, you know, a safe space there. So we didn't want, we didn't have, have the dressing room filled with performers. We were like, okay, right. we can have three an hour. Um, so we thought, okay, we'll do, we'll do a combination of digital numbers that are sent in. We'll have a combination of live performers um, and testimonials that uh, um, people can send in. And I think the testimonials did a lot um, to really hear people. And a lot of people, you know, really came through like Alaska from Drag Race and mm -hmm. Justin Bond and Jane Wheedland from the Go-Go's and um, amazing John, John Karen Mitchell, you know, Hedwig and all these people really um, showing up made a difference. And so what we, we did is, um, and, and I gotta say, so we raised 270,000 we did not raise that all in those 12 hours. We let people, because I wasn't sure who was going to be able to watch the telethon and I wanted to, um, I wanted to give people a chance to be part of this and to help us, even if they were busy on that day. So 
we started a week early and I was so impressed on, on how quickly, you know, the fear of losing something to people, if they're, if it's important to them, they'll show up. And we, you know, we, in three or four days, we made $50,000 and we started, wow. we started the telethon. We have, we having reached our initial goal, which was a hundred thousand wow. dollars. And uh, so then it felt at that point, like, wow, this is great. And I had talked to my, you know, in my head, I, someone had asked me, well, what do you need to really get yourself completely out of the hole? Like this was just to be able to pay our rent right? and, and not, not fully drown. And then someone had said, what do you really need? And I said, well, I need like 250, 280, something around that to, to get us through the end of the year and uh, make sure that we can, or at least until things can open up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I didn't think, I didn't think in my wildest dreams it would happen. And then it did. And, and we, so we, you know, when we started the telethon, we, we started and then we raised it to 150. That became our goal. And then suddenly we had made that goal. And then um, we had, uh, we're at two and then we're like, oh my God, we're at two. We, we got to go for 250. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and it just, and you could feel it in the room. Like, like it was like this energy that kept building and building. We're like, oh my gosh, we're, we're actually going to make this big number. That was just a total fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I feel very lucky that so many people love the space and were willing to donate their time and their energy. Um, to do it, but it was great, I think, also, and why we chose to go with with Give Butter is because we could have that live stream right there on the donations page. And so so you're getting to, you know, you're seeing it, you're getting to, you know, there's the comments and you're able to call, like, and actually interact with someone. So there was a lot of, a lot of ways to really participate, um, you know, with us. Uh, and um, and a lot of people became team members. They wanted to bring in, you know, they wanted to bring in people and help us get support, which I think it was a very it's a very great tool, um, you know. And, and they they just chose to do it themselves, and that, you know that wasn't even Amazing. something that we pushed. Okay. Um, wow. The, you know these were these were just random people that that wanted to get involved, and uh, I love that. Incredible. I mean, I, I do know some of them, obviously. But, <laughs> but it wasn't like your strategy going in. You weren't like, this is a peer to peer fundraiser. It just kind of organically happened for you. Yeah, purely organic. Like that was that was something that they found on their own. Yes. So for everyone who's following along, obviously, we're going to um, link this below so that you're able to take a look, watch the format, check out some of these team pages. And if you are looking for a, how do I start my story course? Here's a free lesson, Darcy, just read their story. I mean, amazing. It's so heartfelt and well-written, easy to follow, understand. Um, and obviously thousands of people rallied around this story and message. And so I'm just wondering as we're looking at your fundraising page, any other tips, tricks, or lessons learned? Because this was your first time using Give Butter. Anything that stands out to you that you think could help someone else who's listening right now? You know, I uh, I think that having um, the testimonials that we had people do were really, really good drivers in terms of um, tugging on people's heart a little bit and, and hearing from somebody else the importance of what it is that we're doing. We showed those during the telethon, um, but then we also put them up. You know, the, the video of the testimonials came mm -hmm. later um, as far as what we, the video we had um, on Give Butter. But I do think the testimonials were really important because it gave you an outside perspective that wasn't just the voice of the people that are um, asking for for help, for sure. um, I think that that was um, something that really worked for us. I I think um, you know I it was hard because they were coming in so fast, mm -hmm. 
but liking and trying to respond to some of the comments as they came in and, and really seeing that interactivity. Um, we actually, when we were done, we spent some of the money that we made and we had um, really beautiful thank you cards. Oh, uh, nice. created, and we, anyone that gave us their address, we mailed them a card afterwards. And the, the amount of feedback we got on that, I think, those people would would donate again in a heartbeat because they've any way that that and a lot of people when they would donate in real time we would if they would donate above five hundred dollars we would give them shout outs on the telephone any and 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 but the truth is if people donated five dollars we still sent them a thank you card or an email if they only had their email That's address we sent, but i think recognizing your donors is huge and it's classy you know, and, and they feel, they feel like, okay, you know, my, my, my money went to a good cause, but I'm also like, like they care about mm -hmm. your owners. And I, and I think by doing that, you really ensure people being there for the next thing, whatever it is, if it's another fundraiser, if it's yeah. a show where they're going to buy a ticket, whatever it is, I think, um, uh, any any way to connect with them and to thank them is is huge. Hundred percent donor recognition goes so far. I'm wondering, just as we close here, for other small business owners who might be watching right now and feeling really inspired and or terrified to start their <laughs> fundraiser. Let's be honest. Um, what would be your word of advice or encouragement to them as they are about to get started on their fundraiser? don't be afraid um talk to your community like reach your community like you know um i think those are two very important things like there's people out there that that want to help you find those people and 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 you know hone in on your community um i uh, you know it we were a good we were a good story that the media picked up so reach out to your news stations we we were on every news outlet doing you live news. um that was super helpful in um reaching uh again a larger a larger audience that that didn't know our story mm -hmm. um be heartfelt and um, in in your story, and don't be afraid to, you know, be vulnerable. Like mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, it. I I didn't like saying, you know what, we're gonna close. If it if you're too casual about it, and you're like, oh, we need some money, mm -hmm. they're not gonna be there. But mm -hmm. you need to be realistic with what the stakes are, and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know yeah and, and and in that respect i think it's important to let people know that that how important their donation is in keeping what you have going i mean being a being a business owner and if i'm, if I'm speaking to other business owners they probably know it but i'm very very aware right now in my life that you need to get put money in to things that you want to exist around you and mm -hmm. Um, people need to be, you know, and, and, and this, especially at this time, like all these people, they haven't been going out, you know, they haven't, they haven't been coming, paying ticket, paying for tickets, paying for drinks. Like they've got the money to, to, to you know, to support, to support something that they want to, that they want to sustain. That's a great point. So many excellent words of wisdom and advice for other small business owners who are watching Darcy, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad that your community rallied around to save Oasis. What an important, iconic um, clubhouse, right? As you said. Yeah. And so thank you for using Give Butter to raise these funds. And again, for inspiring all of us today with your story. You know what? You're more than welcome. I'm happy to do it. And it really was, it, it's such a great um, platform to do it. I mean, you, you really have put the best of everything together. So um, thank you. It was a game changer. Amazing. And thank you for following along this <laughs> story with us today. Yeah. Everyone else. Um, 
please join us again next week for another success story. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Get Butter's YouTube channel. Until then, happy fundraising. Bye, everyone. Bye.